whizzing through this video at uh, double speed in the attempt to possibly have it up in time for Halloween in case anyone needs a last minute costume. Um, I've taken some rubbing alcohol through my brows to make sure that they are as clean and dry as possible uh, before I glue them down. So this Juno Birch inspired look is a recreation of the uh, look she did for Vogue's YouTube channel recently and it's a drag look so I'm going to be blocking my brows. Um, I'm definitely not an expert on how to do this. I've only done it twice in my life. Uh, so I would recommend watching some other videos on how to do it. Trixie Mattel recently posted a video to her channel uh, where she does Trixie makeup but with drugstore products and she gives a quick overview. Um, I watched that recently just to refresh uh, my memory on how to do this. But essentially I'm taking this Elmer's glue stick which is water soluble glue and running it uh, in layers over my brows. Throwing in my blue contacts uh, because Juno Birch has stunning blue eyes <laughs> and uh, I'll, I'll promise you that's the last time I'll try to do her accent. <laughs> Putting on some moisturizer. I've already uh, prepped my skin as usual um, but it took a while to get my my brows glued down and so I just wanted to throw some extra extra moisturizer on there. Um, the final step of the brow block is to press some powder directly over it. This will set the glue and start to smooth the area and I'm using Studio Fix uh, powder foundation because it will also give me a bit of coverage. This um, will get completely painted over with the, the face paint, so it's it's not too essential that it's totally color corrected. Ooh, and there it is, the uh, violet uh, base, essentially. Now, in the video, Juno makes her uh, foundation a little bit more of a lavender color, and it took me a long time to even get it to this purple, and uh, I decided to just go for it. It'll uh, be more pastel when uh, once I powder it down. It's looking pretty purple people eater at this point. Um, in the video, I saw that Juno mixes some white Krylon TV paint stick with a purple hue to make her base. Um, I don't have that product, but I do have the Makeup Forever Ultra HD stick foundation, which I've heard is similar. So what I did was I mixed some of that foundation stick with colors from uh, my Makeup Forever Flash palette, the red and the blue and the white. But man, you always need so much more white uh, makeup than you realize to lighten up a shade. <sighs> but once I got my color, I just went in on the face um, using a flat foundation brush and I'm just smoothing it everywhere, trying to get my neck as well as my ears um, as even as possible. It's pretty tricky to do this with such uh, creamy, greasy products, um, but we'll make it work. I was pretty worried at first about painting over my brows, worrying that the brow block would be a little too thick and chunky, um, but I think it worked out pretty well as you'll see in just a second. There it goes, nice and smooth. <laughs> now, uh, Juno Birch is not always this lavender color. <laughs> I found uh, once I looked up her Instagram, she'll be blue or pink or, you know, all other shades of alien beauty. But I've already gone kind of a greenish blue on this channel before and I've gone silver so I figured this is this is a good color for me. I love purple. <laughs> now you'll have to excuse my camera with the um, tissue around my dress and you'll see later with a lot of white powder being used the 
the camera's exposure and white balance uh, settings were really struggling to adjust, so um, apologies, I'll get pretty washed out off and on throughout, but just bear with me here. I had never heard of Juno Birch until I saw uh, the Vogue video that she did, and I was instantly smitten. <laughs> Um, and knew right away I, I wanted to try, uh, try to look like her. So I figured, Halloween, what better time? Um, so the components of the costume I actually, I had all of. So I didn't have to go out and buy anything. Um, it's hard to see, but I have a couple wildly patterned dresses layered on top of each other. Um, and I'm going to use a... A familiar old Halloween wig to complete the look. Now I'm contouring here with a cream before I set and then we'll contour a little bit more with a powder later but that cream is actually a uh, purple lipstick which is by Melt Makeup and so I'm just doing that in my cheekbone area. I'll likely do a little bit of nose contour as well but I'm going to just do that with the powder. Speaking of powder, um, I'm going to set everything using the RCMA No Color Powder. <laughs> and I really went ham with this. And that was for a number of reasons. Number one being that uh, in the video, Juno herself uses a lot of powder to the point where she has to use her asthma inhaler. And it's also because I've learned from using the, uh, <laughs> oh my god, look at that, Makeup Forever Flash Palette um, in the past as a foundation base that you really need to set it well because it's, it's what's referred to as like a grease paint um, consistency. So I'm using a matte dark purple eyeshadow to begin contouring um, my cheekbones as well as my jawline. Um, but I needed to get a little more of that excess powder off because I was feeling pretty crusty. <laughs> Looking pretty crusty is, is <laughs> the real issue. <laughs> um, feeling like powder from the movie Powder. So I got um, most of it off. I'm going to leave it um, down the sides of my nose like that because it'll help um, with the contouring process. And I'm just going through my eye sockets, connecting to my nose contour with that same deep purple eyeshadow. Um, this is actually very similar to the shading and contouring on my very first makeup video here, the Aladdin Sane David Bowie tutorial. Um, and I mean, it's a similar case there where your base is so pale, you need to put your features kind of back in using shadows. I'm then taking the Natasha Denona uh, Tropic palette, ooh fancy, and the color called Zena or Zena, I'm not sure how to pronounce it, Z-E-N-A, and this is a lighter kind of lavender lilac color, it's a matte eyeshadow. And I'm just going over the uh, deeper shadows just to blend them more and also using it a little bit down the bridge of my nose as a highlight. Man, I love this uh, purple eyeshadow from this palette. It's so nice. Okay, I'm showing you there that um, I first mapped out my brows with a light um, eyebrow pencil before going over in the black. But please disregard the eyebrows otherwise. I I got the I got the height of them completely wrong. So you'll see later that I do correct it. The shape is pretty close uh, to what she does, but otherwise ignore the eyebrows. Ugh. So what I'm doing there is taking a pale blue eyeshadow and defining the eye uh, sorry the brow bone with that. Um, and then blending that out well. 
taking the uh, NYX Jumbo Eyeshadow Pencil in the color Milk, which is just a matte white cream, um, and I'm putting that all over my eyelid. The white uh, cream from the Makeup Forever Flash Palette would also work well, um, but I thought this would be a little bit uh, more cost efficient. <laughs> Curling my eyelashes before I then go into eyeliner. I'm using the Rimmel London Exaggerate Liquid Eyeliner. I don't know for sure, but based on the way the container looks and the fact that uh, Juno is in the UK, I think this is probably what she used. Um, this is also apparently the kind of eyeliner that Amy Winehouse used, so that's pretty darn iconic. Um, and just drawing a big black winged uh, shape on my eyes. This is a really tricky type of eyeliner to use. Um, I have to say it was not easy to do, um, so I can't recommend it if this is your first time trying a big uh, winged liner look. But what is nice about it is that it's very black and it dries down quite matte as well. Um, taking a little bit of black mascara, can be any mascara here because I'm going to be putting lashes on top, but want to make sure that my top and bottom lashes are black. There it is. Looking better. See the um, eyebrows have been removed <laughs> and I repainted my base underneath them um, so that I can reapply. And I was much happier with the placement. The placement um, I had earlier was more of like the divine drag level and really I just wanted the uh, new eyebrows to follow the top of my natural brow line. Uh, so that was the guideline that I used and that same uh, pencil I used for my eyebrows I'm taking through my waterline on the top and on the bottom I'm taking a white pencil and then tapping over that white pencil with the purple shadow that I used earlier from the Natasha Denona palette so that my f entire eye uh, looks very lavender and you don't see my like <laughs> yellowy flesh popping through because who would want that? Okay, uh, putting some glue on my eyelashes and leaving them to dry and get nice and tacky. In the meantime, I'll do my lips. Um, I didn't have a liquid lipstick that really matched the color she used, so I'm using um, the pink color from my Makeup Forever Flash palette directly on the lips with uh, an OCC lip brush. And in retrospect, I should have overdrawn my lips more um, to really get that Jennifer Coolidge look. I mean, I have pretty full lips, so I didn't go overboard, but really this is a drag look and I regret it. <laughs> so plopping my lashes down on my lash line and pinching them together with my natural lashes with my tweezer. I really also regret using these lashes. They were pretty gunked up from the last time I used them. Oh well. I'm dabbing on the center of my lips some of the white cream color from the uh, flash palette to lighten up the, the pink shade and to make the lips look a little more full. This part was fun. I'm drawing on a mole with my lip liner, sorry, with my eyeliner, <laughs> and then drawing on my super natural highlight points using that same uh, white eyeliner from NYX so I can look very artificial and plastic. I love this detail. It reminds me actually of doing like uh, the pop art uh, makeup or any kind of makeup where you're replicating um, a two-dimensional drawing. I think it's really fun. So there's the makeup. Ooh, but not quite. I was a little um, unhappy with my crease, so I wanted to deepen it a little bit. 
I'm running a purple eyeliner through the crease and blending it out just to make them seem a little more deep set. And oh, thank God I did this. <laughs> I'm uh, drawing back over my lash line to make sure that uh, it's nice and black. Oh, and there's my really ratty old wig. You might remember her from my uh, divine drag <laughs> tutorial video. And she was just ratted out to filth for that look. Um, and it's the only blonde wig I had, so <laughs> I reused it. Um, and kept on ratting out the center of it and then shaped it. It's hard to see it's out of frame, but the hair does go straight up quite high. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's not the greatest wig, but she'll do for now. Oh. And I put on my totally stunning rubber gloves with painted nails. I love, I love that aspect of Juno's look. Um, I'm going to feel so glamorous washing the dishes here on out. <laughs> um, yeah, so like I said, I had all the components of this costume already. And then I borrowed these beautiful vintage 60s sunglasses from Opticionado Eyewear. Check out Opticionado Eyewear. They're the best. <laughs> and that completes the look. I love it. I was, like I said, instantly taken with Juno. Um, I've always been totally inspired by uh, Jennifer Coolidge, as well as Lisa Marie, who was featured in um, a number of Tim Burton's movies, most notably Mars Attacks. She plays the uh, the beautiful blonde alien who tries to disguise her huge brain under an enormous wig. Anyways, so those really, you know, hit me where, where I live. Um, and she's just stunning. <laughs> I'm gonna futz about on the camera a little bit more, but yeah, I'm pretty pleased with how this looks, considering how fast I pulled it together, I do honestly think I look more like Ursula the Sea Witch <laughs> than Juno, but, um, you know, I had a lot of fun doing it. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Happy Halloweeners!